Hi everyone, uh, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. And I'll be honest, it's been probably like two months since I've played this game. Since I changed to uh, uploading this weekly, it's actually been really easy for me to get a backlog going. And uh, only now have I started to run out. So yeah, I've been uh, I've been really, really far away from this. Uh, <laughs> embarrassing, embarrassing. So, um, we're going to stop by the Oasis, head to the extra dry desert. I'm just going to finish exploring it. Um, yeah, I believe I wanted to stop to record. Got a bit of cactus. What did bit of cactus do? God, I'm so out of practice. Wasn't I like, yeah, that guy poisoned me or something. Oh, jeez. Bit of cactus, yeah? Yeah, all right. I'm still ultra hydrated. Yeah, I am. Antagonist. Okay. We're 99% explored. And I'm still hydrated. All right. You crest a dune and survey the nearby area. Desert exploration completo. We have a small pyramid. So now we can go here. Um, I'll be honest. I forget exactly what this quest is for. <laughs> Step inside the pyramid to find, just as your father described, a cunningly carved wood scale model of Seaside Town. Detail is stunning. If you live there, you'd be able to see your house from here by now. <laughs> That's a that's such a dumb reference. A small stock socket in the stone floor, the edge of the model, appears to be where you're supposed to put the staff of Ed. Supposedly, sunlight will pass through the gem at the top of the staff and be focused on a specific location on the model, showing you where the ancient pyramid is buried beneath Seaside Town. Neat. Guess you'd better commence to getting that staff then. All right. Where's the... Uh... Oh, yeah, it's here, right, isn't it? Chaos in the Copyright Club is finally dying down. Bartenders are sweeping the broken glass. Musicians are turning their spare instruments. The remaining mob goons are sitting back down to their overpriced pasta dinners as janitors drag the bodies out the back door to be stacked next to the dumpsters. <laughs> That's so grim. Shen and his bodyguards are back at the corner table. They give you the smuggest, smirkingest grins as they see you approach. Grins that you would never tire of kicking in the teeth should you get the opportunity. Welcome back, Dusky Alfred, Shen says as you sit. You achieved the item I wanted? Yeah. I retrieved the item you wanted, you bastard. Now, now, he admonishes you. Don't be a sore loser. Puts a glass vial of blue liquid on a large Lazy Susan in the middle of the table. All right. Suddenly put the artifact on your side of the Susan, and one of the bodyguards rotates it 180 degrees. Shen looks over the artifact with a satisfied expression, hands it to the other bodyguard to pack away in his suitcase as you uncork the little vial. You start to drink it, and then you stop and glare at Shen. He smiles innocently and gestures you to continue. As you drink the blue liquid, you start to feel better. We finally lost annoying ancient serpent poison. There, Shen says. Now we both have what we wanted. Not quite, you growl. Oh yes, you still need my copperhead charm. Very well. It'd be rude of you to make me to make you leave. It would be rude of me to make you leave empty-handed. I'll give you the charm if you run another errand for me. You're such a jerk, Shen. Beggars can't be choosers. Bring me R Murphy's rancid black flag hidden away for centuries in the castle in the clouds in the sky top floor, and I'll give you the copperhead charm. Have your word on that, Shen? You ask. My word of honor, Dusky Alfred, here, he says. Let's drink to it. Oh, for God's sakes. Waiter brings two glasses of champagne and sets them on the Lazy Susan. Hold it right there, you say, as Shen reaches for his glass. You irritate the turntable, switching the glasses and fix them with a cold chair. He shrugs, takes the glass, and downs the champagne. You grudgingly follow suit. All right, it's settled. I'll bring your sacred whatever in exchange for the copperhead charm. Think again, dummy, Shen crows. I put poison in the other glass this time. Can't believe you went for it. Bodyguards practically fall out of the chair laughing. God damn it. Jump out of your chair and reach for Shen's neck, but one of the bodyguards flips the table with a swift click, blocking your path and sending you staggering backwards into a busboy who drops a tray of glasses, kind of makes the sound of the breaking glass, and the sound of a table being flipped over incites a crowd to start brawling again. Shen and his men slip away from you in the bodies, in the crush of bodies and hail of bullets. Man, is that guy a jerk. More of these zoods, huh? All right. Well, let's head here. Goth giant. 
Logan, old friend. I guess we're just going to be fighting these guys again, huh? Giant needle, huh? Needle from a giant record player. Like most of the things in this castle, it's very large. Unlike most of the things in this castle, it's wicked sharp. Oh, it it's a weapon. We also got Angry Farmer Candy. Uh, adds a whole bunch of shit, but reduces mysticality. Who cares? Tiny Brick of Flavored Sugar. The Crown Prince of Saraville made her the Duchess of Fruitonia. This would be their twisted love child. I love the way that this game writes, <laughs> honestly. Oh, yeah, I've got this now. Surea fangs your opponent in the torso and greedily sucks the vital juices from the wound, dealing 16 damage. It then slams over to you and bites your ankle, injecting you with the four mentioned juices while blinking its big brown eyes at you. It's so adorable. Yeah, this is my new this is my new companion buddy. Uh, their name is Surea, which is just uh, English for slayer. But they're a, a seal larva. Five pound adorable seal larva. They've killed 35 people. Cute little bloodsucker. Kills enemies with fangs and adorableness. So they work just like uh, my Mosquito Desmond, but they're a seal, so I like them better. Yeah. Adorable five-pound seal larva. Or, sorry, adorable seal larva. That's actually their species name. Camel calf, that's funny. Man. Shout out to Soraya. You're fighting the burning snake of fire. Okay. Peer down to the punk rocks, the punk rock giant's terrarium. Giant snake down there, but you're more interested in what it's wrapped around. Ebony scracker of cloth. It could only be Murphy's rancid black flag. Rabble down to the terrarium. Try not to spook it, but it spots you. Oi, it says. You're not hot cold enough to be in here? Look at me. It used to be a lizard, but I threw gasoline and fire. Now I have stumps of arms and no eyebrows. Allow me to demonstrate. Flicks its tail out, grabs a smoldering cigarette and the giant ashtray. On the shelf next to the terrarium, it ignites itself with a butt, becoming a snake wreathed in flame. It whips its flaming tail on you, lighting your ear on fire. Story, story of your life, man. Damn. A little white ass got whooped. Hey, we got a muscle point, though. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, I'm actually pretty close to getting level 13, which I think might be when I stop getting new quests. Actually, I can just click here, can't I? Ugh. You know, this this poison's really irritating. We got stolen sushi. Great. I'll, uh, I guess I'll grind again until I get that again. Uh, so I'll be right back. Hey, and we're back. Didn't take as long as I thought it would. It blows a fireball at you, sizzling parts of you that you'd rather have unsizzled. Uh, let's just get them. Fury comes off you in waves as your opponent's heads nearly come off his torso with the force of your blow. Which uh, blow dealt 109 damage for those keeping score at home. You smack him on the other side of the black sword, dealing another 99 damage. Overcome with the thrill of battle, you savagely whack him again, dealing another 71 damage. And then Surea deals 22 damage and injects it into me. And I got Murphy's rancid black flag. Hell yeah. Let's head on back. Oh, right. Just lun smack him. Um, oh, yeah. I've also got here and all of these. Yeah. Oh, man. Try to get to the Red Zeppelin with this huge, huge mob of protesters around it. So dense and so packed and so tight that you can't get to the ship. Try to elbow your way through, but no one will let you in. Too busy waving signs and shouting slogans. You can even see a few animals and birds in the mix. Utter chaos. Hopefully you won't have to battle forever more to get through them. Oh my god. You're fighting a Jefferson pilot. Like Jefferson Airplane. Go to hell. Woman's the slickest, most graceful jet pilot for Je Jefferson Airlines, LLC. Company's fortunes have been rising in recent years. Even considering developing starships, boo, Red Army's investment in Zeppelins is dragging, dragging the airplane economy down. Pilot can't turn the tide. She's going to have trouble feeding hungry mouths at home to say nothing of feeding her own head. It's so dumb. An eagle? Like the band, the Eagles, boo. You know, I imagine uh, most people would be like, man, how do you know all those old bands? To be frank, mostly from Shrek, but I remember Jefferson Starship and Airship because they were the band in the Star Wars Holiday Special. 
Red Army's construction of the Zeppelin mooring tower displaced a large number of eagle areas in the region, drove off the eagle's natural play, the Leonard. Needless to say, eagles are finding it hard to take it easy about all of this, and they're going to take it to the limit to get the tower tore down, even though most of the Leonards are already gone. She lands on the shoulder of a witchy woman who turns her arm into a newt. Ow. And we got an eagle feather. Nice. A fleet woodsman. I don't get this one. Woodsman, like a lumberjack, but more Renfair, is one of the fast wood cut- fastest woodcutters of the age, but now his favorite force is being cut down to the Red Army to provide timber for the interior structure of the Zeppelins. He imagines a tomorrow in which there are no more trees to cut down. I can't stop thinking about the tomorrow. Oh. Don't stop thinking about tomorrow. Oh, start thinking about today. Yep. What if he has to find a different line of work? He's afraid of changing because he built this, his life around those trees. He hates you with his, oh my god, Fleetwood axe knocking you straight back, of course. Why am I, why am I surprised? Why am I not surprised? All right, you're finding a Leonard Skinner. Boo. This guy's wearing a fur hat and coat, holding a big sign that reads, Save the Leonard Habitat. Apparently the Red Army Zeppelin Tower is endangering the Leonard's natural breeding grounds. Since this guy makes his living skinning in them and selling their fur, he's not going to let it go without a fight. Oh, we got Sweet Roll, Alabama. This is the kind of sweet roll they make in Alabama, which is like a regular sweet roll, only twice as big. Obesity is a huge problem in Alabama. <laughs> Gives you a whole bunch of shit. That's good. Oh, yeah. Um, I think I bought something. Didn't I? I think I bought like a ton of fireworks or some shit. Oh, Lord, I have so much. Can I use this? Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Yeah, sure. Let's get that. Oh, that reminds me. I I I, I got to get back to killing the the seals. Uh All right. Let's go back to the zeppelin. Blue Oyster Cultist. <laughs> oh, brother. Pass a guy in a blue hooded robe who's waving a sign and chanting angrily. Stop the Zeppelins, long live the Oyster, he shouts. Apparently the Red Army Zeppelin mooring post is on sacred ground. According to the cult, the spot where the Blue Oyster will descend after its millennia-long journey through the stars. The very spot where the Black Sabbath will begin and the time of the reaping is hand. Blue Oyster Cultists don't fear the reaping, but they fear the Blue Oyster won't come at all if the Red Army doesn't back off. Boo, I say. Boo. Another eagle. Oh, here we go. Find yourself in the middle of a mob of protesters waving Molotov cocktails around. Hey, uh, you say? Eyes narrow and they turn on you in unison. That might not be like the, the best idea. You know what you think? What do you mean, one of them snarls? Let's say, uh, maybe, uh, Vyacheslav Molotov and Count Verna and von Zeppelin wouldn't be the best of friends if they met. In fact, they might explode and kill us all if we were to get together. Sounds like you spent too much time reading books and not enough time trying to break down the systems as a particularly mean-looking Leonard Skinner. In fact, I'm beginning to suspect you don't belong here at all. Think of something fast. Let's join in. You grab three Molotov cocktails from a nearby Molotov cocktail trait, put them down the pants of the nearest three protesters, who are forced to go back to their houses to change pants. Cool prank. I guess I'll uh, uh, pause it again until I get another one of those. Hey, and we're back. This looks like a good bush for an ambush. You notice a hedgerow just inside the perimeter of the protest. Seems like it'd be a good place to hide and then jump out of the last minute and scare a bunch of them off. Would you like to do that thing I just suggested? You hunger down to the bushes, but don't really blend well enough in to do any serious hiding. Make some scary noises and scare three protests away. But you, uh, can't shake the feeling you could have hidden more effectively if you were, I don't know, some kind of sneaky well have good, it's good at hiding in these bushes. A Leonard, maybe. No, oh, look at that. <laughs> In the middle of the crowd of protests, you find a park bench. They must have wanted to take breaks from protesting to feed ducks or use heroin. Anyway, you could probably sit down and give them the stink eye, which is the third most popular thing to do while sitting on a park bench. Oh, man. 70s and 80s music, huh? Just all heroin and heroin. We creeped out three of them. All right. <laughs> That's pretty solid. All right. I'll take another break now. Hey, I decided to check back on Shen. 
march across the floor of the Copperhead Club and back to Shen's table. Brushing angrily past a waiter who seems to be trying to figure out how to get a broken ninja down from the rafters. Like like a whole ninja? <laughs> okay. Here's your friggin' artifact, jerk face, you say, throwing it at Shen. One of the bodyguards catches it and puts it away. Don't be a poor sport, Disky Alfred, Shen says, smiling. Toss you another vial of antidote. Just playing with you. Come on, have a seat. Drink your antidote. We'll discuss the charm. Do I? Yep, I get it. Wishing to hell that looks could kill, you sit down from Shen and drink the antidote. Once again, it proves to be the real deal. There, you see? All better. Honestly, it's like you adventures can't take a joke. Give me the charm, Shen. Not putting up with any more of this crap. Okay, no more games. One more thing I need. Lacrosse stick of Lacaronado hidden away in the smut orc logging camp, and I'll give you the charm for real this time. Claps his hands, and the waiter brings an unopened bottle of champagne and two glasses. Here you are. Both perfectly safe, I promise. Uh uh, no way in hell. Oh, come on. We have to drink to seal the deal. Don't think I'm going to pull that trick three times in a row, do you? Yes, absolutely. You pull a flask out from your pocket and drink from that instead. Shen drink, shrugs and drinks one of the glasses of champagne one of his bodyguards takes the other. I'm sure this will be a profitable arrangement for both of us. When I believe that, you crumble. Shen roars with laughter. Maybe because I poisoned you again? You're so stupid. What the hell, you protest? I didn't drink your friggin' champagne. That was my own flask. Shen and his bodyguards are laughing so hard, tears are streaming down his face. That waiter you bumped did you picked your pocket, he switched the flasks. Ha ha ha, my god. My sides are splitting. Storm out, pausing only to grab your flask from the waiter who's holding it out to you with a sheepish expression on his face, which you punch. He stumbles backwards, arms windmilling. He crashes into a mobster's table. You don't bother to stay and witness the violent change reaction that results. All right. Smut orc logging camp, huh? Oh, the <laughs> frattle snake. <laughs> you make your way into the deepest cracks of the Samanork Valley, a description you vow to never use again, but the resting place of the lacrosse stick of La Coronado. The air stinks of body spray and hair gel down here, but you see the stick resting on an altar shaped to look like a giant popped collar. <laughs> Before you can reach it, you hear a rapid <laughs> and turn to see the dreaded frattle snake. It shakes the paddle on its tail, bears its fangs at you, and it prepares to strike. It accidentally whacks itself in the head with its own paddle. It looks a little dazed and confused for a minute. Let's uh, thrust smack him. Oh. That was easy. Oh yeah, I've got this on now because I drank one of those. It gives me a bunch of sleaze damage. Yeah, I bought a bunch of these things. Oh, interesting. Nice. The cross stick of La Coronado. Sport historians still tell the tales of that fateful game against La Coronado State. And how different the political landscape of the modern world might have been if that idiot goalie hadn't insisted on using a stick made of solid gold. Okay. Maybe we'll kill Shen this time. Fan dancer. Okay. Oh, fuck. We got a level. Okay. Start across the almost entirely wrecked interior of the Copperhead Club, broken glass and bullet casing crunching under your feet the whole time to Shen's table. Good to see you again, he says, laughing and waving a vial of antidote in one hand and a bottle of champagne with a big red ribbon and a label that says totally not poison champagne in the other. Did you bring me a present? Yeah, I did. Go to the edge of the table and throw it aside. Smash the artifact over Shen's head. His bodyguards jump to their feet as he goes sprawling, but you clock one of them with a bottle of champagne and when you've pick up a flaming shish kebab from a nearby waiter serving tray. The other one wisely runs away. <laughs> you crouch down next to Shen and pick up the antidote. Ha ha, Shen laughs, wincing. Okay, you got me that time. We're even now. Ha ha ha, you reply. No, not even close. You proceed to beat nine kinds of hell out of him until he tells you where the copperhead charm is. Turns out he had it in his jacket pocket all along. What a douchebag, you mutter, as you stomp out of the now completely wrecked and empty nightclub. Cool. Hmm. <laughs> Managed to start the war on the mysterious island yet? If you can't get them worked up, try assassinating Franz Ferdinand. Historically, it tends to work. Jesus Christ. Okay, um, that's the end of the, that quest line, right? Let's take a look. Yeah, we have all these now. Cool. 
go back to this pyramid. Right, yeah. Copperhead charm. Ironically, it's made of tin. Okay, so I guess we'll find the staff. That makes sense. Man, got a level, huh? That's crazy. Huh? Yeah, you eye them with as much bad intent as you can muster. You keep out six of them so they can leave. Um, I will... I will see you guys next time. I'm going to cut the episode here. Um, thank you for coming by to visit. I've been Alfred. This has been Kingdom of Loathing. And again, still free to play. Um, there's six character classes available right off the bat, so you don't have to play the game exactly like I do. Um, and when you beat the game once, which does not take as long as I've been playing. I've been doing side quests and grinding. But when you beat the game once, um, you actually get a whole bunch of other quests and... Uh, other classes to play through the game as it's one of the only mmos with new game plus and it comes highly recommended as you know so yeah um i think that you all should play this game or donate to them so yeah i've been alfred see you guys next time